Welcome back. I'm Tyler, you're watching LWLN, and given that it has come to my attention that a goth YouTuber by the name of Herbs and Alters has mistakenly wandered into the Lolita community, committed multiple crimes against fashion, and stumbled out again dressed like a drunken lot lizard crossed with the Easter Bunny, I suppose I'll have to take a detour from the important topic I was working on to clean up the five-car pileup they left behind. With any luck, we'll correct the record on what Lolita fashion actually is, and set his viewers straight before we have an army of cotton-tailed thoughts accosting our community like hippity-hoppity harlots. This is the pie sheen of patience that I will be leaving on my desk to remind me that this person doesn't know any better, thus I should resist my natural inclination towards verbal arson. And without further ado, let's continue with the thing a good chunk of you are already pissed about. Don't lie, you clicked on this video with the intent of hate-watching, disliking, and clowning in the comments section. So, who is of herbs and altars? Hailing from the UK, Dorian is a 30-something goth YouTuber. His channel looks like you stuffed a shuffle button into a salad shooter half-submerged in a pool of absinthe. And I can firmly say his presence never would have caught my notice had he not careened so thoroughly out of his lane that he managed to get a speeding ticket in two jurisdictions. He's currently wanted in the Lolita community for making a video entitled Goth to Lolita, a UV me transformation. And before we go any further, Lolita, for the uninformed, is a Victorian-inspired Japanese street fashion with feminist roots started in the 1970s that looks like this. And it has nothing to do with Lolita the book. Look up the definition of homonym before you embarrass yourself in a way that will require witness protection and a face transplant to shield you from this show. Any further information on the fashion will be handed out as it becomes relevant. For now, let's turn towards the scene of the crime entitled Goth to Lolita, a UV me transformation. So Dorian gets a sponsorship with one of the many Walmarts of kawaii bullshit. They decide to do a makeup look to match the upcoming transformation and intended to turn themselves into a quote a cute little lolita doll you say that around a lolita and you're going to come away with a cute little concussion and that's only partially in jest given the propensity for the public to mistake lolitas with living dolls the latter being part of the dollification fetish community which is like comparing people who wear fursuits for fun with people who are convinced that their true form is that of a 12 dicked rabbit dragon with blueberries for eyes google that shit at your own risk, God knows someone's making bank on Patreon drawing the sexual fantasies of a plushy humper with the bank account of a feudal lord. The point is, keep living dolls and lolitas separate in your brain. Meanwhile, Dorian moves on to say, quote, It's been quite hard to find a really standardized lolita look. He's talking about standard lolita makeup, and he may as well be looking for the lost city of Fucklantis because he's going to find the eight-breasted statue of the Grand Madam before he discovers anything remotely close to standardized Lolita makeup. This is mostly because such a thing does not exist, an issue that somehow causes him to choose this as inspiration before saying, You're also trying to basically make yourself look Asian, so. Yes, he could just mean anyone doing this particular eye makeup is trying to look Asian. However, in the context of turning himself into a quote, cute little Lolita doll, you couldn't fault his viewers for presuming that Lolitas are all trying to look Asian too, which is not a thing. And considering the cultural appropriation police are already patrolling the streets in force, Lolitas would very much appreciate it if you didn't add yellow face bullshit to the plate of things we're already arguing against in court. We have one lawyer, she is currently being paid in promissory notes and crumpets, and the opposing DDLG counsel has just soiled themselves on the stand. That said, having chosen an eye makeup look for questionable reasons, Dorian immediately stumbles into another landmine with... It's weird, I, like I say, I've done a lot of googling on Lolita makeup and there's like a vast variation. Most of these kids are just incredibly cute young kids who barely have makeup on at all because they're just that cute. Is that a nice sentiment if you know nothing about the fashion and are coming at it from the smooth brain perspective of an outsider who I absolutely should not bodily eject into an airtight void because they don't know any better and I should remember that before saying things a person with a conscience would regret? Yes. Is it also a false stereotype that has consistently haunted the Lolita community to the extent that we were discussing it 10 years ago on Fractal? 
hacking live journal, wearing Hime bumps, and sending gift payments to absolute strangers. Yes, and the point is, the majority of Lolitas are adults. Most major Lolita brands charge $300 a dress. And while there are budget options, the young kids you're talking about are usually priced out via money or lack of patience, given that their brains are still growing and most of them have the attention span of a vibrating rat. Lolita takes time, money, and the experience necessary to use it well. Yet this misconception of the lot of us being dewy-eyed children is so prevalent that one of the most common questions Lolitas hear is, am I too old for Lolita? Which to me sounds like, am I too old to enjoy things? A sentence I believe will be incredibly useful to you whenever you catch yourself thinking you can't do or like blank because you've made too many rotations around a burning ball of gas that doesn't care if you live or die. Ask that question when you're second guessing if you're allowed to like any other harmless hobby you're interested in. The point is, no one is too old for Lolita, and our friend Dorian has moved on to discovering, quote, Pink seems to be very much a theme. There's a lot of pink. It appears that Dorian has cottoned on to a major theme of Sweet Lolita. They're not wrong. And this is the perfect opportunity to tell you that Sweet Lolita is one of the three major Lolita substyles. There's also Gothic and Classic Lolita, Sweet being primarily known for pastel colors and prints featuring confections and cute animals, Gothic being comprised of black, white, and jewel tones with prints featuring bats, castles, and cemeteries. And finally, Classic Lolita is known for dustier color palettes, muted tones, florals, solids, and an elegant overall look that's one part fine lady and one part sentient wallpaper disguised as a person. Please note this list of traits I've given you for these substyles is not absolute, and a certain major sweet Lolita brand is known to shove a thousand gothic crosses into a kitten print because they become drunk on power. The resulting frock is still sweet Lolita, and you'll be able to easily distinguish between the substyles with enough time, liquor, and loss of faith in aesthetic integrity. What I'm saying is that Dorian got one right. I'm sure he'll use that momentum to show us that this is only the grand beginning to his learning more about the fashion and using that knowledge to concoct a core that he can truly be proud of. This is the full outfit. I'm afraid it's a bit gloomy in my bathroom at the moment. This is why I wanted to do it in the daytime. But anyway, it's still cute AF. I love the little bow on the back. And it comes with, as I say, the gloves, the choker. It comes with a pair of panties. It comes with a pair of panties. A pair of panties. 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 It comes with a pair of panties. Pro tip, if the poorly made fire hazard you bought off a Chinese basket weaving website comes with a pair of underpants, complete with being advertised with a come fuck me face, you might have purchased lingerie. Dorian has grievously mistaken ye old slutery for actual Lolita fashion. And in the interest of explaining to the layman exactly why I and the community don't appreciate this type of representation, we begin with the fact that Lolita fashion at its very core separates sexuality from femininity. It does so in a way that covers a lot of skin, which makes it an incredibly modest fashion, but it twists that same traditional understanding of modesty on its head by at the same time being an incredibly powerful style of presentation. This makes it immensely distinct from other examples of modesty as seen in traditional or religious styles of dress, which usually seek to mute the wearer's appearance. While Lolita fashion revels in femininity at a level that makes it anything but invisible. This focus on the aesthetic statement being made instead of the wearer's physical body has made the Lolita community a comfortable place for women, asexuals, minors, and others who just want to enjoy frilly dresses in relative peace. And in short, no one wearing Lolita is trying to be sexy. It takes 50 layers before you so much as get to the derriere, and this is not the get up you want if you're planning to boink before one of you starts collecting social security or dies of old age. But wait, it gets worse. Oh my God, I feel like a cosplayer on only fans. At this point, I am unconvinced he didn't trawl the internet looking for the exact wrong thing to say, compiled a list, and isn't reading off it even now as he looks into the camera with the innocent expression of a prostitute fresh out the fuck squatch corral. OnlyFans, for those without an internet connection, is a site for amateur porn artists, and Dorian has just likened Lolita fashion to a getup that sex workers wear on camera while they do things I don't want to imagine without at least one major concussion to undo the damage. He even managed to tap the comparing Lolita to cosplay 
cosplay button on the way down. As we all know how much Lolitas love being mistaken for people engaging in costume play, what's next for this consummate performer? I expect we'll be hearing about Halloween or sheep in three, two... And um, this is blatantly gonna be like a really lazy, slutty little Halloween costume if, uh, <laughs> if I ever have to dress up at um... And I feel like going as Elle Woods from Legally Blonde at, uh, at her party, being a inappropriate Playboy bunny. I'm rating this 12 out of 10 on the Richter scale, meaning you would have to have been shaken pretty hard at birth to think that this was remotely a good idea. But again, reel it back in, because I'm sure they don't know any better, they didn't know anything about Lolita, and I'm certain if they'd had the proper information, they wouldn't have done whatever this is supposed to be. So yeah, totally totally sold on Lolita. I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of Lolita people telling me I didn't nail it and that my skirt is way too short and that my, my skirt is not puffy enough and all the other... There's a lot of rules, aren't there, about Lolita and how long your stocking should be and how long your skirt should be and things like that that I I didn't get into reading about all of that. So this is, this is Lolita from a total outsider layman's perspective. If that layman is lying dick down in a bordello, sure. But from my perspective, Dorian, the only excuse for you continuing to label this video goth to Lolita and purposefully misinforming your fans on the fashion is either you have the mental prowess of a postage stamp or you just don't care. Either of which is fine, but it does come with the consequence of being read the riot act by a woman dressed like the landed gentry meets Polly Pocket. The thing is, your commentary on all the rules you were violating reveals that you knew enough about the fashion to know that you'd fucked up royally. There is no reason for this video to keep Lolita in its title. And while you're likely not keen on doing anything I say, given that I have the bedside manner of a porcupine, a better name for your next attempt might be goth to kawaii, goth to cute bunny princess, or goth to insert random ass terminology that isn't a strictly defined fashion with important core principles that you trampled all over on your way to slut town. I'd like any of your viewers who actually stuck around this long to know that the vast majority of Lolitas are actually decent human beings with feelings who wouldn't stab you in the dark. I am absolutely an outlier, and I'd like to direct a lot of you to Big Sisters of Lolita Fashion on Facebook should you have any questions about our fashion and want them answered by people who will hold your hand without the intent to yeet you into a river. In conclusion, Dorian is very cute, but that's not Lolita. Meanwhile, I ran out of patience the moment I flicked that tiny cat off my desk, so I'm going to call it a day. I'd like to thank my patrons for their patience while I detoured to cover these shenanigans, and should you like to join their number, you can head over to patreon.com slash lastweeklolitanews for more content that doesn't have anything to do with this, yet is somehow worse. I don't recommend it at all. Do not pass go. Do not permanently stain your soul with whatever the fuck I've decided to vivisect out of spite. I'm going to go bang my head against a wall. Thanks again, guys, and I'll catch you next time.